Hello and welcome to my 15th video of my Nymph for Beginners tutorial series, Files. So far we have been only reading and writing to the terminal. Now let's do the same with files. The actual reading and writing to files is very similar to reading and writing to the terminal. When we wrote and read from the terminal, we specified if we wanted to read by typing the std in variable, followed by calling the appropriate procedure for reading from it, for example, read line procedure. And when we wanted to write to the terminal, we used the std out variable and call the write procedure on it. Now with files, you must first open a file. Now let's open a file, but before we do that, we must first have a file. Let's make one using the Visual Studio Codes Explorer feature, but located here in the top left corner of it. Let's toggle it, then new file. Let's make a file called test.txt. Let's write some text into it, some text for test file. Now let's open a file using the open procedure with our file's name in the string as argument. Let f is open file its name test.txt. This will open the file. Now this should open the file, but we don't know if it will actually do that. So let's use an if statement to check, which we can do since open procedure returns true or false if it succeeded. To do this, we will have to replace the let keyword with a bar keyword and declare it as a type file because variables made with the let keyword must be initialized, not declared as they are immutable. And immutability requires a value from the start. So let's comment this out and var, var f as file type, then if f.open file name test.txt is equal to true echo file open. Now let's run this. Here we go. File opened. Okay, now let's read from the file by calling the read line procedure on a variable that will hold the value of the line that we will read. So, new variable that data assign f.readline. Just like reading from the terminal, we use the read line procedure on f variable that we'll be reading from. So f as in this file, and then let's display it using echo, echo data. Now let's run this. Here we go. Some text for the test file. And in here we have text for the test file. Now let's write some text to the same file, but first we must open it again for writing because by default, open procedure opens files for reading, but we must give it an optional second argument to specify that we will be writing to it. But before we can do that, we must first close this file, as you cannot both read and write to a file unless you use a read write mode, which will also exist. Okay, let's call this file by calling the close procedure on it. F dot close. That's all it takes to close a file. Now let's reopen the file. Let's copy this. Now change this dot to assign equal sign and then fm write. This will specify that this will be mode for writing to this file. Now let's write to it f dot write just like how we would to std out, which would be std out instead of f dot write. One, two, three, four, five. Now let's run this. Okay, here we go. One, two, three, four, five. It overrided the some text for the test file from before. Now, when you open a file for writing using the fm write parameter, if the file doesn't exist, it will create a new one. Let me demonstrate this by changing the name of the file that we will open from test.txt to test2.txt. Okay, let's copy this line right here, change test to test2, and let's write something in it. f.write, a different one. Um, let's say reverse five four three two one, and now let's run this. Here we go. S two has been created, and it has five four three two one in it. Now let's write multiple lines into the file by using a multi line string. So let's use the write procedure again, but this time instead of double quotation marks, we use six of them, three on each side, and put some string in it. First line second line and third line. 
Let's separate this and run this. Now let's open test to that txt. Here we go. Five, four, three, two, one. First line, second line, third line. Now let's read those multiple lines from our file line by line. First, we must close the file using the close procedure since we will be using the same file again, but this time for reading. So f.close. And then let's copy this and change the fm write to fm read. So file mode read. Now let's read first line. Var line is f that read line, then echo that line. And now let's do this two more times. And remove that var. So we'll be using the same variable. And let's put a comment here. First line. Second line. And third line. Now let's run this. Here we go. All three lines have been read and displayed. The reason it's read line by line is because when reading a line from the file, it moved the position in the file to the next line. So if we try to read again after the last line of text, it would give us an error that end of file has been reached, so it cannot read anymore. Let's try this. Let's copy one of these blocks. Copy it here and comment empty line will error if no lines left. Now let's do this. Here we go. Error. Unhandled exception EOF reached as in end of file reached. Let's comment this out. Now, if you have a lot of lines in a file, you can also use the read all procedure. Now let's do this, but first close and open the file again. Okay, let's close it, F close. Now let's copy this line, exactly the same. Now let's make a new variable, all lines, and read from the file, F read all. Now let's display this using echo all lines. Now let's run this. Here we go. It's double now. So first let's put an extra echo here to separate from the first red. Let's run it again. Here we go. These three lines are from these three lines of code. And the last three are from the f.readall. Okay, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe if you liked it. If you had any problems with any part of the video, let me know in the comment section. The code for this video is in the link in the description. Have fun.